Last weekend saw the running of the 2017 World Ironman 70.3 Championships or Half Ironman World Championships in Chattanooga, Tennessee. With a lot of the athletes uploading their activities to Strava, I was able to pull some stats out of that and deep dive into what's going on, what devices they're using, and a few other interesting stats. I now have swim data as well, which is a little harder to get than bike and run because there's no swim segments, but I've managed to do it. So today, what I have is records from the swim, bike, and run. We have 346 activities from the swim, 1160 from the bike, and 598 from the run. So here's the summary of the data that I have. The country breakdown, uh, United States as the host country. The host countries usually dominate uh, the entries for this field, 48.2%. We also have 15% unlisted. Australia's coming in third, go the Aussies. UK, Canada, Brazil, France, etc. The gender breakdown from the data set is 54.7% male, 42.3% female, 3% undefined. For the averages and statistics from here on in, I've combined both of those. So the events that run on September 9th and September 10th, the women's and the men's, they're both combined because everyone here is an athlete and what I'm looking at doesn't really matter what you are. So onto the swim stats. What we've got here is the pace breakdown of the swims. There's a few outliers here because again, it's really hard to get the swim data without those segments, but I've done my best. We've got an average swim pace of a minute 47 per 100 meters. And you can see the average there floating in the middle of about yeah, 140 pace per 100 meters on the swim. Onto the devices used in the water, the Garmin 4 run a 920 XT. 51.4%, so it doesn't have a stranglehold, it has the market share, like you wouldn't believe, 51% of uh, yeah swimmers in that event. 14.5%, the forerunner, the older model, and the 935 coming in third position there with 11%, but complete Garmin dominance there in the water. Over to the bike. Now this is where it all started for me, looking at the bike devices, but first of all, the interesting stats we can pull out of the bike. Power meter usage was at just under 60%. Average power for those with power meters across both men's and women's events was 196.8 watts for the 90 kilometers. Heart rate monitor usage, 62.76%. Average heart rate of 149, and average speed there of 32.6. Not bad, pretty quick given it's the World Championships. Onto the devices used on the bike. Again, we see the 4Runner, 920 XT, 39.5%. The first bike computer takes second place there, which is the Garmin Edge 520. Still always up there. The Edge 520 is hands down the most popular bike computer out there at the moment for people who upload to Strava. And then in third place, the Forerunner 735 and then the Forerunner 935. Um, scrolling down there, the next bike computer is the, or the dedicated bike computer, is the Edge 820 coming in at 3.5% of the Edge 1000, holding exactly the same numbers there and the 510s, etc. The only non-Garmin, or the first non-Garmin device on a bike there, which is down in about 12th or 13th place, is the Element Bolt, so from Wahoo. Still only 0.8% usage, so very, very low compared to the dominance of Garmin, but whew, it should be called the Ironman Garmin World Championships for sure. Over to the run, let's have a look at the stats for there. We have some running pace, as expected for the World Championships. These dudes and chicks are pretty swift. Average running pace there of five minutes and eight seconds per kilometer. And we have the breakdown here of that. Over to the devices used on the run. No surprises here, the Garmin 4Runner 920 XT. Remember this was released back in October 2014, so it's getting quite old. It's still up there in the stats though, taking a huge chunk of uh, the running market there, 47.8%. Second one there is the 4Runner 735 XT with 15%. Then the 4Runner 935. The trusty 935 is growing, it's only the newer model. And then the first non-Garmin is the Polar V800. Very, very interesting. So in wrap up there of the Ironman World Championships Strava data from that subset, well, the 920 XT is absolute king. No real surprises there, it's a device made for exactly this. Swim, bike, run, and it does it very, very well. Released in early October 2014, it's been around for a while, so I'm guessing people will be looking in the upgrade path soon. Now, I've been looking at the data from a features point of view and what's out there and thinking, well, you know, what are people buying and what are their habits and are they buying based on feature sets? Maybe not the case. I've got the 935 as a multi-sport watch, well, as a smart watch pretty much, so I can you know, know what these people are using and get my head around the devices themselves that I'm talking about here. So I've gone and sourced one of these. Now, finding one of these in Melbourne was a task. It really was. Most sports stores here in Australia will stock 
three or four models of Garmin's. Now they, they have the Vivo Fit for the basic or entry level. They've got the Forerunner 235, which is the dominant running watch for any marathons or half marathon events that we see. And the Phoenix 5, which is the multi-sport watch, but that's way up in the stratosphere of prices. It's a nice watch. But the 935, to find that, I had to visit six or seven stores here in Melbourne. So what we're seeing people use may not be just based on feature set or what the best device is for the task or the job at hand. It may be just what's available. Something I'll take on board. As always, the full data presented here will be up on gplama.com. I'll put links below to that. Now, Ironman is big business and they don't just run one event. So they also ran the Sunshine Coast and about four or five other Ironmans on the same day. I have the Sunshine Coast data. Let me know if you're interested in that and I'll do another video or just put the data below. And we also have Amy's Grand Fondo coming up here in Australia this weekend, Australia's biggest Grand Fondo event. So I'll be deep diving into that data once everyone's crossed the finish line and we'll see what, uh, what devices people are using out there on the bike. Let's see how the Element Bolt's going up against that Garmin Edge 520. Thanks for watching, we'll see you soon.